Glad we're here. We have a great worship service today. Wonderful message. Uh, the next in our series on generosity. We'll be talking about that today. Um, also, a couple announcements before we stop. Start. Pastor Bob's installation is next Sunday, the 29th. So Pastor Bedell, our new pastor, he'll be formally uh, installed next weekend. Uh, an item of business, if you're using last year's envelopes for your offering, please don't. Uh, pick up your new envelopes for 2017 and use those. And before we begin, let's go ahead and rise and greet each other with a handshake or a hug. Welcome to worship, everyone. All right, and before we have everybody start singing, I'm going to ask you to be seated. We're going to have our National Junior Honor Society induction this morning. So we'd like to invite Aiden and Anna up here, please. Hello, my name is Aiden Gillen, and I'm the president of the National Junior Honor Society here at Emmanuel. We are proud to be inducting two new members today. Would Nikki Sisson and Tegan Rett please come up here? And their parents to, uh, to receive your membership pins and certificates. Pastor Bedell, would you please bless them? So again, this is National Lutheran Schools Week, so this is part of the celebration as we do have a great school here. And this is an opportunity to recognize a couple of students who have worked hard this year, and uh, we want to kind of bless them and also pray for them and that continue to study well and do well. So let's bow our head for prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us we thank you for the blessing of children we thank you for the blessing of education and great schools and great teachers and families who care that encourage their children to grow and mature in a godly way lord we give you thanks for these two children that are joining the national junior junior honor society that you would continue to bless them in their studies that they would both be blessed by what they learn and also be a blessing to those they help through the learning that they have gained so we ask that you would continue to watch over them, keep them in your care, bless them and their families as they continue to grow and prosper, not just in education, but also in their knowledge of you and your love for them. All this we pray in your most holy name. Amen. God's blessings be with you. Let's rise and sing about God's assurance of love for all of us. And it's higher than the mountains that I face. And it's stronger than the power of the grave. And it's constant in the trial and the change. This one thing remains. This one thing remains. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me your love never fails it never gives up it never runs out on me your love and on and on and on and on it goes 
Yes, it overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I'll never ever have to be afraid This one thing remains Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My debt this paid, there's nothing that can separate my heart. From your great love Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me And on and on and on and on it goes Yes, it overwhelms and satisfies my soul and I'll never ever have to be afraid This one thing remains Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me your love, your love, your love. All right, I need you to be my percussion section today. Are you ready? We always clap on the two and the four, remember that, okay. <laughs> All right, you sound great. Keep that going, you're the drum machine. We remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we've come to give you thanks for all you've done because of your love. We're forgiven Because of your love Our hearts are clean We lift you up With songs of freedom Forever we're ashamed Because of your love Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, as we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we've come to give you thanks for all you've done. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom. Forever we're ashamed. 
change because of your love. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom. Forever we're changed because of your love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us confess our sins to God and to one another. Most merciful God, in the hard times we try to hold on to as much of our money as we can. We confess we have been wasteful in big or small ways with what you have so graciously given to us to support our body and life. Forgive us, we pray, for the times we have stored up treasures on earth, neglecting the treasures of heaven, and for the times we have spent money frivolously on what we think is important. Our generosity is at times abysmal, our love for others tentative. All these things we bring before Jesus, the Redeemer of our bodies, minds, and spirits. If this is your true confession, then declare so by saying, yes. yes. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Upon this, your confession as a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the steadfast love of God. You are sealed in the blood shed by our Lord Jesus on the cross. He alone has atoned for your sins by his gracious actions we are forgiven. Amen. Speak to God. Please be seated. At this time we invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning. Good morning, guys. I think we all know each other. My name is Mrs. Gilliland. And I'm glad that we get a chance to talk today because I brought something in, my Bible. This is the Bible I keep at my desk here at work, my one I look through all the time. And I tabbed the Bible to this chapter in Mark. Mark is towards the end of the Bible and it is part of Jesus' teachings when Jesus was alive. And there's a story in here called The Widow's Offering. And it's about a lady that they call a widow. A widow is someone whose husband has died. And back in Bible times, when a husband would die and a, and, um, and a widow would be left by herself, many times they didn't have a lot of money and they were poor. And this widow was in that situation where she was poor. Now Jesus had been at the temple and he was preaching. The temple was like a big church. And it was the holiest place. And it's where people would come to um, kind of like church time. But they did things a little bit different there when it came to offering time. You see, we normally at our church pass around an offering plate during church time, right? And it goes up and it goes down the aisles and people put in their connection card and they put in their offering. Sometimes even we might not even see my off parents put in offerings because they give offerings through their bank accounts at home. And so you might not even see the actual money going in. But money comes to church in a way to support it, and to give back to God. Well, back in these times when Jesus was preaching and he was in the temple, he was taking a break. And he sat down in this area and he was sitting and looking at an area of the temple, 
called the treasury. And he saw people coming up giving their money. And they didn't give money like this. They put it in a big box. In the box, people would walk up and put their money into the box. And he saw people who had a lot of money put in lots of money into this box until when he saw this widow come up. And she, the poor widow, came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Two little coins she put into the box. You think, oh, wow, she didn't really give much money. But it says here that that was all the money that she had, everything she had, she put into the offering, everything. That was very generous of her. And she gave from her heart because she trusted God. She gave back trusting him. And it makes me think about ways that we can be generous. Do you guys have jobs, right? All of you making money, lots of money? No? I know. See, we probably don't have lots of money, but there are ways that we can be generous in other ways. Just by giving and sharing to friends, being kind. Maybe it's even that you finished your food at your plate at the table and you notice you have an extra chicken nugget left and your sister or brother might like it. And you say, hey, do you want this extra chicken nugget? There's ways that we can be generous throughout our life. It's just living it out all day long. Will you pray with me real quick? Heavenly Father, we want to be generous for you like the widow in the story today giving you our all. Help us to do that as we live out our life this week and through what we do. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you guys. You can go back and have a seat. Our scripture verse today is from the book of Mark. It is the story of the widow. And Lisa Larson is here. I was waiting. I knew there was a teacher that was going to do it. <laughs> I was like, I'll pinch it. Lisa Larson is here to read the scripture for us. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. And in his teaching, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts, who devour, devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning. We are in the, the midst of our sermon series called Living a Life of Significance. Last week we talked about the power of compassion, how God is compassionate on us, and so we share that with others, and we continue today with the story of two widows and how it reminds us to be generous in all things. So we've already heard the one, the poor widow, that gave everything that she had to the treasury. Well, there was another widow in more modern times. I read about her just recently. She is from Indianapolis, Indiana, and her name is $15 million worth. And yet, she lived a life like a pauper. She never had anyone come over. She didn't have any friends. She didn't have any family. No one ever got into her house. But the only people who ever got in her property were the police, because she would call them and she would say, somebody's breaking in and they're going to steal all my stuff. And they would come. She would never let them into the house. And usually they discover a, a squirrel or a stray dog or, or something like that outside on the property. Well, one day she got, oh, the, the police got another call because one of the, the neighbors who at least kind of 
looked in on Mrs. Jackson and noticed that there wasn't any activity for, for several days. So she called the police and no one answered the, the door. In fact, they had to cut three padlocks just to get into the gate. And they had to break the door down because there were six deadbolts. And there they found Mrs. Jackson, poor Mrs. Jackson. She was dead on the kitchen floor. And all she was wearing was an old tattered bathrobe. And yet they found in her house over $5 million worth of cash. $100 bills everywhere. In the drawers, in the cabinets. In the toolbox, in the garage. Even in old vacuum cleaner bags. There was $2 million stuffed in a trash can right next to her bed. And in the garage there were two brand new Cadillac Escalades. Neither one ever driven except from the dealership to her house. She never even took them out. She had all this stuff and yet she had nothing at all. No friends, no relationships. And she was paranoid that everyone was going to steal it. Well, let's take a look this morning. Let's compare in your notes. Your notes look something like this. You can follow along, fill in the blanks if you like. Mine look like this because they have the answers on them. So let's compare these two widows. One was wealthy, Mrs. Jackson. The other was poor, the one in the story from the Bible. One was paranoid, thinking that everyone was out to get her, that no one cared about her, that they were only there if they ever were there to steal her money. The other was generous. She gave everything that she had to the Lord. One was miserable. It says miserly, but really that means miserable. And the other was filled with, with a life overflowing with joy. Now the real difference here isn't the first three that I have listed. It, it really isn't at all about the amount of money. Because there are poor people who are miserable and middle class people who are miserable. And there are wealthy people who are miserable. No, it's not the amount of money. It's the attitude. It's the attitude that we have toward what God has given us. A generous spirit is one that leads to a life of significance. But the generosity doesn't just automatically occur. It begins with proper perspective. It begins with humility. There in, in your notes, there are two Bible verses. I want you to, to read that first one with me if you put it up there on the screen. So let's all read it together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let's try that again. First three words, all together. First three words. In the beginning. Uh, what's before the beginning? Nothing. There's nothing. You've got to begin. So who's there? What's the fourth word? It is God. God is there in the beginning. No one else. No people. Nothing else. Which means that everything is and was and will be because of God. John captures that in, in his gospel, if you put that up there. And it says, in the beginning was the Word, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is there with the Holy Trinity, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. What was made without him? Nothing. Nothing was made without God. Everything comes from Him. Everything that we are and, and all that we have comes from God's generosity. So let's do a little exercise this morning. I will name something and you say, it's God's stuff. Can you do that? Pretty simple. I'll say something, you say, it's God's stuff. All right? Okay. <clears throat> Your body. God's stuff, not yours. That's a holy place. Treat it well. Your children. Your house. Your car. Your money. Yes, it is. It's God's stuff. It's all God's stuff. He gives it to us for a while to use, to enjoy, and to share with others as stewards, as caretakers while we are here on this earth. But it's all God's 
stop. How many of you have children? Any children? Anybody have, ch you have children? You have children? Okay, lots of children. All right, how many of you give an allowance to your children? Anybody still do that? A few? Whose stuff is it? Whose money is it? It's God's stuff. And then he gives it to you. Then you give it to them. Children understand, they get it. You know, we may give them an allowance, you know, for a few chores around the house. But they get it. It's, it's your stuff as a parent. They give it, you give it to them. You provide for all of their needs, don't you? Children get that. Their room is because of you. Their bed is because of you. Their food is because of you. They get to go to school because of you. Their books are because of you. Everything comes from you. And so also as God's children, we recognize that he provides for all of our needs. Why? Because he loves us. And we're not always so lovable, are we? Are your children always so lovable? No, they're not. But you love them anyways because you're the parent. God loves us. And so he provides for all of our needs. Take a look at what the psalmist says there up on the screen. <clears throat> the eyes of all, and not just human beings, but the eyes of all creatures. Look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food as well as everything else in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Knowing that God provides for all of our needs gives us a new perspective. It, it changes our focus. So put that up there. Remembering that everything comes from God helps us focus our thoughts and lives on God. That's what God wants. He wants our focus to be on him, not because he's some greedy, selfish meanie, but because he knows that life is so much better that way. You see, we focus on God and all his blessings that he gives to us. We forget about our troubles. We forget about our needs when our focus is on the Lord. He knows that such a life gives us joy and purpose and Meaning, in other words, a life of significance. It all begins with Him. Generosity begins with God. It puts everything in perspective. And then it begins to grow out of love. Generosity grows out of love. Not our love, but God's love. John says that we love why? Because God first loved us. It doesn't just happen. But God pours into us all the blessings of life. All those things that you listed before, or I listed before, and you responded, it's God's stuff, those are blessings. Food, house, home, children, clothing, your job, your talent. Those are gifts that God allows you to use to earn a living for your family, to earn money for food and all those things that he knows that you need, but it's all from him. And so through the blessings of life and through simply observing the abundance of nature, what a world we live in. Enough to feed over 7 billion people currently. And the only reason some of them ever go hungry isn't because there isn't enough stuff, but because we don't give it to those who need it. And so, through the abundance of nature, and most especially, as we look to the cross and we understand the greatest gift of all, the sacrifice that God's beloved Son made for us, coming down from from the celestial heaven down to this earth become one of us to live with us and to die willingly so that all of our sins are forgiven and all these blessings become ours in God's inheritance heaven itself is given to his children through these blessings we discover how much God loves us we see that God is always generous to his children. Let me give you a modern day uh, example. This comes from the, the BBC, British television, British broadcasting. 
There's a, a story, this is what they did. They went to London to the Bowery, uh, to a poverty-stricken area where there are many drug addicts, especially addicted to heroin. And they, they just surveyed those who were there, maybe a crowd like this, maybe even larger yet. They went into the slums, into the ghetto, and, and they just picked someone. They didn't know anything about them whatsoever. They just said, eh, you know, him. <laughs> We're going to pick him. And they followed him for two years. Everything he did, see where he went, what he did. And then they put him in a treatment center. And after two years, the man they picked was well. And then they said, we're going to follow up. And for the next two years, we can pick one of your friends. And the man had a friend named Bob. And they followed him for two years. Now, Bob was a little different than the first guy. He didn't want to get well. Even though he was living in poverty and squalor, he had to beg and steal for his food every day. He did not want to get well. He had a rather complex family history. His mother had died at birth. And his father, who was left to care for him, was hospitalized for a number of months. And the court took Bob away from the father. He had no mother and placed him with another family. He was bitter and angry and he did not want to get well. So when the BBC picks up the story, they find that about 20 years later, Bob's father, who had disappeared, who didn't know where his son was, turns out he had been searching for Bob for 20 years. And he finally found him. And he wanted him to come home. And he says, we will help you get well. Bob's father was sad because of the life that Bob was living. And yet the offer stood and the doctor said that no one ever got well faster than Bob. He never looked back because of the compassion, the generosity, the love that his father showed. And that, my friends, is a picture of what our Heavenly Father does for us. He's always always generous to his children. He offers all the blessings of life, not because there is goodness and righteousness in us, because there is goodness and righteousness in him. And he showers down all these blessings. And no matter what condition he finds us, he will pursue us to the ends of the earth. And he will continue to make that offer if you will simply come home with me, if you will be my child. I want to give you all of my stuff. And it will be yours. God is always generous to his children and he simply expects us to be generous as well, to live like his children. Because he pours all of this into us. It's all his stuff and he simply says, share it. Share it with others and give some back to me to do the work that we are called to do. And the Lord saw the widow. She put her coins in the box. Two copper coins, a penny makes a little different noise than large pieces of silver, doesn't it? And two coins makes a different sound than 20 or 30. And the Lord noticed and he celebrated the generosity of this widow. He said that she had given all that she had and that, that amount of those two copper coins, that one penny was more than everyone else combined. And yet, he reminds us, it's not at all what the widow had done. It's not at all what we have done. It's all about what's been done for us. The widow recognized that all she had, even though it's so tiny in, in the eyes of the world, even that amount was from God. God honors 
generosity. He honors obedience. Whenever we follow his word, Jesus says, blessed are those. Blessed in every way. Blessed are those. Physically, spiritually. Those who hear the word of God and obey it. Those who keep it. Those who do it. And so this generosity, which begins with a proper perspective, beginning in humility, recognizing that it's all God's stuff, that we are the created, that we are stewards. This generosity that grows out of the love of God, it, it finally responds with thankfulness. I'm going to close with this. My confirmation pastor, when I was growing up, I didn't talk a lot about giving in the church, but, but this is what he did say. He said there's three kinds of giving. He says there's grudge giving. That's when you really don't want to give anything, but you feel guilty. <laughs> Plate goes by, you got to do something. And then he said there's duty giving out of a sense of responsibility. I mean, somebody has to pay to keep the lights on around here. And then he said there is thanksgiving. Giving out of thankfulness and trust for what God has done. Because God has loved us, we then love others. And one of the ways we do that is returning in the offering a portion of that stuff that God has entrusted to us. In a few moments, we're going to pass the basket again. Reminds me of a story of a little girl, her name was Susie. Susie was in church like this and it was time for the offering. She was still young, she didn't understand really what it meant. Her mom had given her part of her allowance, it was a nickel. And she said, when the offering basket comes by, just put your nickel in the basket. And she said, but mom, I, I, thought, I thought that was for Jesus. And she explained, well, it does the work of Jesus through the church. And it spreads God's word and it shows people Jesus' love. And so the basket went by and, and she put in her nickel and she passed it down. But then she said to her mom, if the offering really is for Jesus, how come there's not more in there? Our challenge today and every day is to be like the poor widow Poor, the world says, in the amount that you gave. But rich, Jesus says, because of the size of her heart. You know, conventional wisdom says, she's foolish, she gave everything she had. How is she going to provide for her children? How is she going to buy bread tomorrow? Well, it doesn't say, but I, I would guess that she has done this before given everything and trusting the Lord as the loving Heavenly Father to provide for all of her needs. Jesus honored her obedience by giving her a special place. Though we don't know her real name, we know her by the name of the widow. The widow's offering. It's my prayer for this church and for each one of you that you might be known for your generosity as well. May God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please rise. Thought this is a great song to bring home this lesson of generosity. 
of truly embedding this message in your heart. To give unselfishly To love the least of these Jesus, I'm learning how to live with open hands All these treasures that I own will never satisfy my soul Jesus I lay them at your throne with open hands and I lift my hands open wide let the whole world see how you love how you died how you set me free free at last I surrender all I am with open hands, with open hands to finally let go of my plans. These earthly kingdoms built of sand. Jesus, at your cross I stand with open hands. And I lift my hands open wide, let the whole world see how you love, how you died, how you set me free. Free at last I surrender all I am with open hands. With open hands You took the nails You bore the crown You hung your head Your love poured out You took my place You paid the price So Jesus, now I will give my life and I lift my hands open wide, let the whole world see how you love, how you died, how you set me free, free at last I surrender all I am with the open hands. With Jesus, lift my hands open wide, let the whole world see how you love, how you died. How you set me free, free at last I surrender all I am with open hands, with open hands, with open hands, with open hands. We join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again. He descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the people. I will end each supplication with, Hear, Lord, in your mercy, and you would respond with, hear our prayer. With all of our heart and soul, mind and strength, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. 
for the whole church, that the gifts of all creation may be used wisely by God's children as a witness to the world. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, that God would be sovereign over our leaders, that his will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, despite the workings of the old evil foe. Lord, in your mercy. For the fruits of the earth, that the harvest may be celebrated as a blessing from God's merciful hand, and that we would continue to trust in God to bring us first fruits in the year to come. Lord, in your mercy. For favorable weather and for those who travel, that God's holy angels would guard and protect them. Lord, in your mercy. For those who rejoice today that they may know God's love in their joyful days, and that needless fears would subside. For George and Sherry Fromm and their ministry to perform God's mission in Cambodia, Lord, in your mercy. For those who mourn, that they may, in time, know the comfort that God has promised them, Lord, in your mercy. And for those who are sick, hospitalized, injured, and enduring treatments, especially Jan Smith, Jeeve Glatt, Steve Glasshagel, Annie Holston, Melvin Camholz, Kathy Jones, Jean Miller, John Siren, Seth Illick, Gloria Wine, Blanche Rasmussen, and Nova Nolte, all seeking medical intercession. And for those being treated for cancer, we pray for Bobby Olszewski, Eleanor Stegman, and Jean Dorn. And for increased wisdom and patience of their caregivers, that all may firmly believe God's strength in the midst of weakness. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for our nation and our new leaders that they would be blessed with your wisdom, your insight, and your discernment. That they would seek your guidance in their legislation and their processes. That they would make legislation that is God-pleasing and remembers the cares and the needs of the people that elected them. Lord, in your mercy. And this week we celebrate National Lutheran Schools Week. Lord, we ask that you would continue to watch over and bless all the Lutheran schools, that they would be filled with great students and great instructors and teachers, that they would be staffed well. Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless their education process, that kids would learn education and knowledge, not just of the world, but also of you and your love for them. Help them to grow in their faith and to become leaders in our world today that are Christian and loving. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend for all those we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share God's peace with each other. Please be seated.
You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours and you are mine your grace abounds in deepest waters Your sovereign hand will be my guide Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me You've never failed and you won't start now and I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours and you My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace Right here yours and you are Take heart, my friend, we'll go together This uncertain road that lies ahead Our faithful God has always gone before us And He will lay the way once again Take heart, my friend we can walk together 
And if our burdens become too great, we can hold up and help one another in God's love, in God's grace. Take heart, my friend, the Lord is with us. As he has been all the days of our lives Our assurance every morning Our defender in the night If we should falter when trouble surrounds us When the wind and the waves are wild and high We will look away To Him who rules the waters Spoke His peace into the angry tide He is our comfort, our sustainer He is our help in time of need and when we wander he is our shepherd he who watches over us and never sleeps take heart my friend the Lord is with us as he has been all the days of our lives our assurance every morning our defender in the night take heart my friend the Lord is with us as he has been all the days of our lives our assurance Every morning, our defender in the night. As we prepare to receive the offering this morning, we are reminded again of God's generosity. It is all his stuff. He entrusts us to use his stuff for the good of others, as well as to provide for our own needs. And now we return a portion back to him to do the work of the church, that the love of Jesus might be shared in this community. A reminder also, if you haven't yet done so, fill out your connection card, place it in the offering basket as it goes by. If it is your very first time here at Emmanuel, hold on to the card, give it to me at the end of the service. I have a gift, just the Emmanuel way to say thanks for being here today. sing with us. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. 
Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. Let's rise and sing, take my heart. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Let's sing about righteousness. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will. Conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. To yours, to yours, O oh Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts that you shower upon us constantly. Lord, help us to appreciate and be content with what we've been given. Help us to look at the needs of those around us and to be generous in the sharing of our gifts that you've given us to share. Lord, we ask that we as a church and school would use the gifts we have been given to the best ability possible to be bold in our proclamation of your word and also in ministering to the needs of others wherever they may be. Lord, we thank you most of all for your Son, Jesus Christ, and the grace, forgiveness, and mercy that is available through him to us. It's the greatest gift of all. All this we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Depart in peace with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we invite the... Sherry and George Fromm to come forward, please. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good. So I hear you're going on a journey. Where are you going to? Back to Cedar Rip, Cambodia. Cambodia. So what are you going to be doing there? During our time, we would be working with the local church in Siem Rip, Pastor Samuel and four villages, and we're building the church from the ground up. Okay, so what do you see as some of the challenges that you might face? The language for one, Indonesia was easy, they used the Roman alphabet, but when we got to Cambodia, God went and changed the alphabet. <laughs> right. Right. And what are you looking forward the most to being able to do, accomplish, or see? Grow the church. Grow in the church, that's great. So the big question is, how can we help you? Pray for us. Pray for our health, for our safety, and that God would use us totally while we're there. Okay. Then we'd also like you to pray for yourselves as to how God would like you to be involved in this ministry. So I guess a good question would be also, how did you feel the tug on your heart to go to Cambodia? This is year seven for us in Cambodia. Wow. Seven years we've been involved in this ministry and 
in my wildest dreams, I could not have imagined God using us in this way. Our initial effort was as we went to appease a pastor, Pastor Feng Shatolo. And as we knelt before the altar in Battenbung at Trinity Lutheran Church, the only Lutheran church in Cambodia at the time, we felt God move in our hearts. Great. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. I'd like to pray a blessing for you, and then we have something for you as well. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of the Fromms. We ask that you would be with them throughout their journey, keep them safe in their travels and their passage within Cambodia. Bless their ministry and bless them, Lord. Help them to be fruitful and see fruit grow in other people. Help them to be bold as they not only proclaim your word, but live your word among a different group of people, Lord. People they've been with before and people they look forward to being with again, but they're all your people. Lord, we ask that they would be blessed to be a blessing to those people, that open hearts would respond to their word, to their love, and see you. Lord, we ask that you would be with us as we support them through prayer and other means, as we help them in their ministry. Lord, again, we thank you for your son and the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ as we share that with people in foreign lands or here in Crystal Lake or surrounding communities. Lord, you are such a great God. Help us to see your greatness and help us to share that with others. All this we pray in your most holy name. Amen. May I say something? Sure. When we moved to Illinois, your children, the kids of the kingdom, embraced us. And this is the day, this is the reason we stand here today. They loved us from the beginning before we even knew Emmanuel existed. We thank you for your children. Because of them and because of you, this is why we're going back to Cambodia, and for that very reason. So, and these flowers, the roses I understand are in testimony of their love for us. We are very humbled by that gift, thank you. And we have one more gift. While Pastor runs, while Pastor runs his errand too, we'd also like to thank the small groups that have supported us in time. Bob Dorn, Bob, we Laura, Jeff, Randy, come on, stand, stand up. Stand up. This is you. This is God. This is not us. Because of these wonderful people, we are here today. They have loved us through all the challenges of settling into your wonderful state. Thank you so much. So this says strength. I don't know if you can read in the back. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It's from Joshua 1.9. So we'd like to, you to have this, and then as a reminder of us, you can look for that, and also as a reminder of God, among other things, you'll, you'll see that as well. So God's richest blessings on your travel, on your ministry, and on your love as you share that with other people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's rise for our closing song. I picked this song out for George and Sherry because as I was thinking about what they're embarking on, I couldn't even imagine the things that they might be facing. And I thought with their faith, with the prayers of the church, the prayers of all of us, and having an all-powerful God, that they won't be shaken no matter what comes their way. This world has nothing for me, this life is not my own. I know you go before me and I am not alone. This mountain rises higher, the way seems so unclear. But I know that you go with me so I will never fear. And I will trust in you. Whatever will come our way Through fire or pouring rain No, we won't be shaken No, we won't be shaken Whatever tomorrow brings Together we'll rise and sing That we won't be shaken No, we won't be shaken Whoa, whoa, whoa Whoa, whoa, whoa Whoa, No, we won't be shaken 
You know my every longing, you've heard my every prayer. You've held me in my weakness cause you are always there. So I'll stand in full surrender, it's your way and not my own. My mind is set on nothing less than you and you alone. And I will not be moved. Whatever will come our way, through fire a pouring rain. No, we won't be shaken, no, we won't be shaken. Whatever tomorrow brings, together we'll rise and sing that we won't be shaken. No, we won't be shaken. We will trust in you. We will not be moved. We will trust in you. And we won't be shaken. We will trust in you. We will not be moved. We will trust in you. And we won't be shaken. We will trust in you. We will not be moved. We will trust in you. And we won't be shaken. No, we won't be shaken. Whatever will come our way through fire or pouring rain. No, we won't be shaken. No, we won't be shaken. Whatever tomorrow brings, together we'll rise and sing that we won't be shaken. No, we won't be shaken. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. No, we won't be shaken. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Blessings to George and Sherry. Have a great week, everyone. Back to the two, three, four. Whenever to come our way through fire or pouring rain, no, we won't be shaken. No, we won't be shaken. Whatever tomorrow brings, together we'll rise and sing that we won't be shaken. No, we won't be shaken. Whoa, 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 whoa.